Buongiorno ragazzi and welcome to week 3 Italian. Now I've made this video to try and make your lives a little bit easier, so please follow along. If you need to watch it more than once, I'd be honoured and flattered, so please do. Introduction. How this is going to work. We're going to share a book together. Then I'm going to introduce some new language about clothing. We're going to play an interactive game together, and then I'm going to introduce your task to you. Now the task does come with some associated golden tickets, so look out for that at the end. Let's go and share our book. This book is called All Around the World, and it's focused on Italy, as you can see. The table of contents has chapter one, welcome to Italy, chapter two, exciting cities, chapter three, life in Italy, and some quick facts and tools towards the end of the book. Chapter one, welcome to Italy. Would you like to see a volcano from a beautiful beach or visit a village tucked in a cliff? Do you like pizza and pasta? Then you would love Italy. Let's visit. And that's a picture of the Cinque Terre. Rocky cliffs line Italy's coasts. The Alps are in the north. This is the highest mountain range in Europe. Rich farmland is south of the Alps. The Po River is here. Mountains run through the centre of the country. Italy is on a fault line. It has more earthquakes than other countries in Europe. Active volcanoes are in southern Italy. Mount Etna is one. Chapter 2. Exciting cities. Every city in Italy has a story to tell. Vatican City is located within Italy. It is the world's smallest independent nation. It has its own army. The Pope lives here. He is the leader of the Roman Catholic Church. Now there are only 1,000 residents in the Vatican City. So only 1,000 people live there in that nation. Venice sits on many small islands. It has a canal system. People hop on water buses or they cross bridges to walk around the city. And there's an image of a canal there. Pisa is home to a famous leaning tower. Florence is where some of the world's greatest art was made. Cinque Terre has many mountain and coastal trails. Pizza was invented in Naples. Milan is a centre of high fashion. Did you know, construction of Pisa's tower began in 1173. It took more than 300 years to build. Why does it lean? Well, it leans because it was built on soft ground. The Colosseum, my favourite. The leaders of the Roman Empire ruled much of the world. When, you ask? Well, more than 2,000 years ago. Buildings from ancient Rome still stand, and the Colosseum is one. Rome is the capital today. The president is the head of state. The prime minister runs the government. Parliament makes the laws. Italians vote for the lawmakers. Did you know, ancient Rome's language was Latin? The Italian, Spanish, and French languages all started as Latin. The languages changed over hundreds of years, but some words are still similar. Ciao. Chapter three, life in Italy. Families like to stay close. Children often live at home, even after they grow up. Neighborhoods are built around piazzas. The church is there, as well as stores. People meet friends or catch up on news. Children play games together. Many Italians have service jobs. These jobs are found in hotels, restaurants, banks, and healthcare facilities. Italians also work in factories. They make products such as machines, automobiles, and clothing. Farmers grow wheat, potatoes, and grapes. Olive trees fill the landscape. Some are thousands of years old. What do you think? Italians have many different kinds of jobs. What jobs do people have where you live? So have a think about it for a minute, guys. What kind of jobs are different in Australia, in Victoria, in Melbourne, in Mill Park? Because it would be pretty hard for me to work on a grapevine in Mill Park, for example. Having said that though, this image here really does represent something close to my heart and that would be where my mum lives. Um, just looking at that image reminds me of my mum's town. Let's continue. The big meal of the day is in the evening. Families take their time to enjoy the food. Sometimes dinner can last for hours, and I can vouch for that. Every Monday night, as some of you might know, I eat at my 
mother-in-law's or my in-law's house and we have a big meal and sometimes that can take two to three hours which is why I might look very tired on a Tuesday because I'm still digesting and on Thursdays I eat at my mum's and my mum and dad's um, and again it's a two or three hour marathon activity where we just eat and eat and eat and eventually I drive home and then I go to sleep. Soccer. Soccer is Italy's national sport. People swim and windsurf along the coast. Bicycle races follow narrow, twisting roads. Many Italians go on vacation in August. Businesses shut down. People enjoy the incredible beaches and mountains. Italy is a beautiful country. If you visit, plan to spend many days. There is so much to see. And some quick facts and tools. And I'm going to move right along, guys. I'm not going to go through all of that. That book is on Get Epic. And, sorry, Get Epic. And I know that many of you have an account for Get Epic, so jump on board if you're looking to find out some more information about that book. And it is part of a series, so if you're interested in some other countries, go for your life. I know you have accounts. Let's close that. Okay, our book is done. We're on to some language. So let's move back to our PowerPoint. Now, as I have suggested already, our language today is based on clothing. So. I'm going to show you an English word, give you some thinking time, and see if you can think of the Italian word. If you can't, don't be too fast, don't be too worried. They will reveal all, or I will reveal all at the end. So the Italian word for clothes is, I'll give you 10 seconds. I'm going to put a timer on actually, or else I'll get lost in all of this. So let's put a timer on. I'll give you 15 seconds before I reveal each word. How about that? Deal? Well, I'm the only person in the room, so deal is good. Let's do it. Is that annoying? And the Italian word for clothes is actually vestiti. Can everybody say that, please? Vestiti. Bravissimi. Let's continue. The next word is hat. Can you think about the matching word or the Italian word for hat? Again, I'll give you 15 seconds. And let's reveal. The Italian word for hat is actually capello. Can everybody say capello? Bravissimi. Let's continue. Shirt. The Italian word for shirt is actually camicia. Everybody, camicia. Bravissimi. The next word on our list is belt. And again, 15 seconds to think of the word belt. If you can draw on previous experience or previous learning. Belt. And the grand reveal, cintura, everybody, cintura, bravissimi. Few to go. Next one is pants or trousers. Traditionally, we use uh, pants, of course, in Australia. So the word is pants. And start that clock. Might have the first starting letter, actually. Hmm. Matching starting letter. And the word is pantaloni. Everybody, pantaloni. Bravissimi. And next word is shoe. Shoe. I think it's the same first letter again. Shoe. 
and it is Scarpa, everybody. Scarpa. Bravissimo. T-shirt. And the word is maglietta, everybody. Maglietta. And this is definitely the last one. Skirt. And the translation for skirt is actually donna. Bravissimi. Allora, time for a game. Ignore the student task for a moment. Languages are online. All right, this game is called Vestimi. And the instructions are, actually, I'm just going to really summarize quickly so I don't have to read all those. Um, basically, someone's going to appear and we're going to dress them as we like and then determine what we dress them in. Now, each time there's a new piece of clothing or a new article, I will show you the glossary words and we'll try and work them out. All righty, so I've got a, just a guy there and the first item I'm going to select are these. And they are pants. They are a special kind of pants though. So what kind of pants have I chosen? You'll be surprised when you see the English word. Glossary, find the word. And the word you're actually looking for here, oh, sorry, turn that a little. Oh, as I move, I can't move down. So it's about halfway down, guys. It says jeans, and it's spelled the same way as the English alternative. So jeans, and e jeans sono blu. Can everybody say that? E jeans sono blu. Bravissimi. Next, I'm going to give this guy some shoes. So. How do I say shoes in Italian? Because I do need to type that in. So let's go to our glossary. Let's find the word shoes. Le something sono bianche. Have you got it? I've got it too. It was one of our words from before. Le scarpe sono bianche. Let's check that. Le scarpe sono bianche. Bravissimo. Ooh, let's get the hat. Porta un something grigio. So that hat is grey and that word is grigio. And he's wearing a what? A hat. Porta un... Have you found the word for hat? It's capello. Bravissimi. And that word is C-A-P-P-E-L-L-O. So just take note, there's two doubles in there. Porta un cappello. Oh, it's not cappello? Oh, scusami. What's wrong with it? Can anyone find what I've done wrong? Is it just cappellino? Oh, is it because it's a baseball cap, but it's cappellino? So if you look, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Did I miss it? Oh, one, two, three, four, five, six words down. <laughs> My apologies. Capellino. Let's try that one. Capel. Capellino. I hope that's right. Okay. Porta un capellino grigio. My apologies. I can't believe I missed that. My goodness. And last thing, I've got to put a shirt on this guy. So here we go. La. Now, that's a t shirt, so don't be tricked by that. I think I was tricked last time. Now it's towards the bottom t-shirt and the translation is maglietta. So, la maglietta è arancione. Let's try that together again. La maglietta è arancione. And now I've got a lady in her knickers. We're going to move on because I don't have time to dress her too. Let's close that. Now, before I do close it, if you'd like to play these games, they're on the Languages Online website, so you can just search for them, guys. I'll leave a link in the description as well. All right. And close that. 
and last thing to finish up. As promised, the student task for this week, and as promised, all the terms are here on the right. So any word that you might use today is on the right here. And we've covered most of them. Some of them might be new when you do your activity, and that's fine as well. You can just explore. Okay, it says, using the list on the left, draw or dress yourself wearing as many clothing items as possible. So you can draw an image of a random person or yourself on a piece of paper and just put clothes on that person, okay? If you're dressing yourself, please have yourself fully dressed <laughs> before you start a video or a picture of any sorts, okay? Now, anything that you do create today, you can send that. So whether it's a photo, not a fox, but that should have an O there. Um, send any photos or videos to the Dropbox link below. Now you don't need a Dropbox account. All you need to do is click on my link here and it will open up a page and you'll be able to drop me your work. You do not need a Dropbox account, guys. I can't stress that enough. It'll bring you to this page. You choose your file from your computer that you wanna share with me. Let's pretend it's this one and you upload it. And all you do is you put your um, email address in here, okay? And you click upload and I'll receive your file. Now, when I receive your file, I'll send an email to your parents letting you know that I have received it. Now, best entry from each year level gets a golden ticket. So good luck with that. The best piece of work that I see this week will get a golden ticket from each year level. Now, I was meant to keep this to 10 minutes. So no one tell Ms. Vidmar that it was actually 17 or I get into trouble, okay? Good luck. I hope you enjoyed that. And I hope I made your lives a little bit easier by doing the video instead. Now, as I said, any link you might need for today's activities will be in the description inside the YouTube link. Good luck, guys. See you soon, hopefully.